So last week's stock market action was completely determined based on the debt ceiling talks and well, here we go, artificial intelligence. You know I had to say it. So what are we gonna look at for next week? What are the catalysts facing the stock market as we move forward into this holiday shortened week? Last week, the debt ceiling talks dominated the market action, with the question as to whether or not they would be able to come to a resolution anytime soon, just making market volatility move up and down. If you've been following politics for more than five minutes, you know that they're not going to solve this until the 11th hour. And now that Janet Yellen has just come out and said that the deadline isn't June 1st, it's June 5th, we've got a couple more days that they'll be able to fight about what they're going to do. On Wednesday, the Fed minutes for April came out and showed that not all the presidents think that we need to hike rates when we go into June's meeting. This means that the meeting is what's called a live meeting. In other words, we don't know exactly what the Fed is going to do. If they hike interest rates, it's possible the market could sell off. If they don't hike interest rates, it's possible the market could get nervous that the Fed sees something that the market doesn't. So that one's up in the air. On Friday, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index came out, and this is the Fed's favorite gauge of inflation, and it actually came in a little bit hotter than analysts expected. The PCE showed an inflation increase of 4.7% year over year, when 4.6% was expected. A tenth of a percent isn't really enough to push the Fed one way or another when it comes to the interest rate hikes, but it is another variable that's on the table that shows that inflation is being persistent. Next week is a holiday shortened week. There are only four trading days because the stock market is closed on Monday for Memorial Day. The bulls believe that the debt ceiling talks are going to have little impact on the markets. It's virtually a certainty that we won't default on our debt. So the market is pricing that in. Bulls believe if a deal is reached, the stock market will actually rally afterward, as anybody who's been on the sidelines nervous over the debt talks will come in at that point. Additionally, with the jobless claims numbers staying low, a lot of bulls believe that the job market is strong and therefore the economy is resilient, even in the face of the federal interest rate hikes that we've seen so far. Far. Finally, a lot of bulls point to the artificial intelligence craze, which came in big this week thanks to NVIDIA's blowout earnings quarter as being what's going to hold up the markets. In fact, some bullish analysts believe that that's actually going to set a price support for the S&P 500. In other words, that AI is so transformative that now the market needs to discount how much productivity companies are going to see into the future and how much the AI is going to cause their earnings to go higher. And like I said last week, there's still trillions of dollars on the sidelines from institutional and retail investors that are sitting it out. And if it decides to start coming in, there's nowhere for the stock market to go but up with that kind of influx of cash. The bear case going forward is that since the stock market has already priced in the debt ceiling, in other words, the stock market thinks there's going to be an agreement. Even if there's an agreement, many bears believe that will be a sell-off event, a sell-the-news event, if you will. With the macroeconomic concerns that are still facing the world, bears still see a big recession coming. And then there's the argument that it takes 12 to 18 months before an interest rate hike by the Fed actually impacts the economy, which means right now we're only seeing the effects the first couple of rate hikes, and there's about 400 basis points more that has to impact the economy. Finally, in an interview last week, Janet Yellen, the Treasurer, secretary hinted that there might be more regional bank failures when she said that more mergers are expected and in code speak merger means bank failure and if the regional banks start seeing impacts from commercial real estate or some other event that we're not aware of we could see another sell-off in the stock market going forward all that being said since it is a shortened week and it is the end of the month it's highly unlikely we're going to see anything particularly volatile happen next week but that being said it's always unpredictable so who knows where we'll go from here. To learn more about long-term investing, including my own moves in NVIDIA, check out my website, getirk.com, which is always 100% free. Please hit like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out, and I'll see you in the next video.